Hey friends, welcome to your week 15 yoga practice. This is going to be a two part class. The first little chunk will be about 15 minutes and will be called morning activation. So some mobility to get your whole body moving. And then the second chunk will be a little bit longer, closer to 30 minutes maybe. And that will be an evening release. Um, so some nice restorative poses. The first half, you don't need any props. The second part of class, I would recommend whatever props you can find. So definitely a bolster or a pillow, a couple of blocks, which I need to get my other one, and then maybe another cushion, pillow, rolled up blanket, something like that. I have in mind that you do split this class in half, so do the first part in the morning and then the second part in the evening, but whatever works for you. If you wanna do it all at one time, totally fine. I'm gonna grab my block. And we're gonna get started laying on our backs. So again, this first part, we don't need any props. Lay on down. Pull your knees into your chest gently, not all the way up towards your armpits, just a little bit up towards the sky. And then take little circles, massaging out your low back, finding some hip rotation. And then move in the opposite direction. Your hands are guiding your knees, taking as big or little circles as feels good for you. Good, as you're ready, go ahead and parallel your shins with the earth. So we're finding this 90 degree bend of our knees and ankles. Hands stretch up towards the sky, palms touch each other. This is our dead bug shape which we talked about in foundations class. So go ahead and review that if you haven't already. And we're gonna take our right hand and our left leg down towards the earth, keeping our pelvis nice and stable. Good, bring it back to center. And then left hand, right leg extend down. Good, lower ribs and pelvis, hip bones are knitting in towards each other. Plant both feet on the ground, press down through your heels and drive through your glutes to extend your hips up towards the sky for a bridge pose. No need to really arch the low back. Keep a nice neutral pelvis, kind of finding a little bit of a tuck of the pelvis under. Good, lower back down, shins parallel to the earth. Right hand, left leg extend. Come back to center. Left hand, right leg extend. Come back to center. Plant both feet, bridge, extend your hips up towards the sky. Good, one more time of each. Parallel your shins, lifting your feet up. Extend opposite arm and leg. Slowly return, switch sides. Slowly return, plant your feet. Press down through your heels, engage your glutes and hamstrings to bridge up. Good, lower back down. Let's cross our right ankle over our left knee. Find a supine figure four. So you can stay here with your left foot planted on the mat. Think about drawing your right knee down towards the right corner of the mat, engaging your hip muscles to do so. Or you could pull your left knee in towards your body if you want more of a stretch. Regardless, we're not using our hands to really pry deeper. We're using our core and our hip muscles. And from here, we can take a little rock, our hips side to side. Good, next time your knees kinda wiggle over to the left, uncross your right ankle, stack your knees, and find a supine twist. Knees are stacked, right elbow cactuses out to the right side, and your gaze can follow. Since this is a twist, let's make it happen mostly from above the belly button. So you can think about pressing your right hip point forward and then peeling wide across your right collarbone. One more breath in. Good, return to center and we'll switch it out. Plant your right foot, cross your left ankle over your right leg. You can stay here or you can use your core to draw your right knee in towards your body. Again, use the hip muscles on your left side to pry that left knee open. Maybe take a rock on your low back again. Good. 
Next time your knees wiggle over to the right, uncross your legs, stack your left knee on top of your right, and then left arm cactus is out to the left side. Take a spinal twist. Left hip point shoots forward. And we're extending long across the left side of the chest. One more breath in. Good. Move back through center, plant your feet and come to a seat. You can press your hands to help you get there. Right ankle or shin is crossed in front of left. Sit up tall out of your waist. Good. On an inhale, twist open towards the right. Use your hands or not. If you use your hands, I would be really gentle with them, placing your left hand on your right knee and your right fingertips behind you. Breathe in. Exhale, forward fold. Stretch your fingertips forward. Feel that nice stretch in the glutes here. Good, inhale, twist to the left. Right fingertips to left knee, left fingertips behind you. Or challenge by lifting up. Exhale, forward fold. Stretch your fingertips forward. Make it nice and active. Inhale, twist to the right. Exhale, fold. Good, inhale, twist to the left. Exhale, someone's pulling your hip creases back and pulling your fingertips forward. One more on each side with your breath. Good, over to the left and forward fold. Good, sit back onto your hips, use your hands for support and switch the cross of your legs so your left shin is in front. From here, we're gonna take some side bends. Inhale, right fingertips plant out to the side, left arm sweeps up and over. Exhale through center. Gentle engagement of your obliques to lift you. Left fingertips plant, inhale, sweep right hand over. Exhale through center. Inhale, side bend to the right. Exhale through center. Inhale, side bend over to the left. Obliques draw you back to the midline. One more on each side. Once you're finished with that, take your time. But when you get there, take five to 10 breaths just to move through some cat cow, some spinal flexion and extension, rounding and arching through the back body. If it feels good to take circles instead, you can explore that. Focus here is on your spine from your pelvis all the way up through your neck. Inhales to open, pull your chest through your shoulders. Exhale, push your hands away round through your shoulder blades. One more breath. Good, plant your feet out in front of you, kneecaps point up to the sky. Hands plant behind you with your fingertips pointing forward. We're gonna take a reverse tabletop. So drive through your feet, lift your hips up. Your chin can stay tucked in towards your chest. And then we're gonna shift forward and backward a little bit. This will open up through the wrists and the shoulders. Gentle rocking, or stay still if that feels better. Good, lower your hips back down. Turn your toes out and your heels in. Press your feet, or your hands. Find a malasana, a yogi squat at the top of the mat. From here, just shift side to side, getting a nice calf stretch, rocking onto the ball of the foot, and then the heel of the foot. Good. Now we'll find some internal rotation of the hips since we worked on external rotation. So we're gonna dip, I'll face this side here. Dip your right knee in towards the very center of the mat. Good, open and back up. Dip your left knee down. You could have blocks on either side for support with your arms if you need just a little bit. I would place them behind you. Dipping right knee down, left knee down. Keep moving side to side. Again, it's important to stretch into internal rotation as well as external rotation. Good, let's take one more right knee drops. 
open it up and left knee drops open it up good a couple breaths in your malasana to land you can press your palms into a prayer position and then knees into elbows elbows into knees sit up tall good hands plant in the center of the mat on an inhale step your right leg back find a runner's lunge hands on the inside of the left foot stretch back to your right heel chest reaches forward good exhale malasana right foot forward inhale runner's lunge left foot back press up through the back of the left thigh stretch forward through your sternum exhale squat good inhale runner's lunge right foot steps back exhale half splits lower your right knee straighten ish through your left leg good rock back forward into the left ball of the foot runner's lunge inhale exhale malasana right foot forward moving to the other side inhale runner's lunge left foot back exhale lower your left knee straighten your right leg find a half splits inhale walk your hands forward lift your back leg exhale step your left foot forward this time inhale high lunge right foot steps back arms sweep arms sweep up bend into your left knee breathe in exhale pyramid pose straighten your left leg fold down inhale high crescent lunge biceps are framing the ears press out through the back of the right heel shoot your right hip forward exhale malasana find your squat at the top of the mat other side inhale left foot steps back high crescent lunge arms reach high good exhale modified pyramid fold over your straight right leg inhale re-bend into your right knee arms reach up exhale malasana top of the mat good this time find an active squat so you won't dip as low your hips will be above your knees hands to heart center also a certain variation of chair pose breathe in here breathe out to stand inhale upward salute arms stretch high extend long through your side waists gentle engagement of the glutes to press the hips forward exhale sit into your active squat or your stable chair inhale here chest presses forward into your thumbs exhale to stand inhale arms sweep high lift up exhale sit low two more times with your breath inhale here exhale stand to rise inhale upward salute add a little back bend if you want exhale low last time move it through good as you sit down find a malasana and then lower all the way down to your bottom that was our morning activation piece of the class definitely a good full body warm-up or a pre-workout warm-up or whatever just really great to do some active mobility and some stretches together and get the whole body moving i would recommend pausing here going throughout your day and then revisiting the second half of the class later but again you do you we're going to move into the second portion of this class which is our evening release grab whatever props you need maybe light a candle find some comfy clothes the purpose of this is not to find your deepest stretch it is to feel supported by these props and in these poses so that you can fully relax and release so don't think about stretching to your utmost limit. Think about how melty can you get? How much can you let go? Let's find a child's pose. Grab your bolster or your pillow. Bring your knees out wide, your big toes to touch in the center, and then slide your bolster between your legs. Sit your hips back onto your heels and then turn your head so one ear rests on the bolster. If 
find a simple landing here. Let your shoulder blades separate on the back body. If this feels like too much of a stretch for the legs, you could place a folded up blanket in between your heels and your hips to kind of lift your hips higher. Otherwise, let your low back start to soften, send breath down into the pelvic floor. Breathe into the backs of the ribs. And as you settle in, let your bones drop and your skin soften. If you're anything like me, you've found it a little bit hard to rest. There's still so much to do. So many things we could get done, but we need to start prioritizing rest and release and rejuvenation. This calming for our nervous system has so many benefits that we don't see right now while we're doing it. But just know that these deep breaths and this relaxing of your body and this calming of your spirit and your mind will trickle its way out into your life. Go ahead and turn whichever cheek is on the mat. Switch sides. Gentle stretch for your neck. And then check in. Where are you tensing unnecessarily? Can you relax your jaw and your eye muscles? And the space between your eyelids. Release your shoulders from your ears. And then feel a grounding down of your pelvis. Take three more breaths here. Biggest, fullest, most expansive ones yet. Let your lungs expand in all directions, especially into the back and side body. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And take two more like that. Gently and slowly and easily walk your way back up. We're going to move into a Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined bound angle or butterfly pose. You can do this without any props, but I would suggest having a block underneath each knee. 
And then you could do it flat on your back or you could build a little ramp with the bolster down your spine and maybe another block or pillow at the top of your space. Take a few moments to experiment and find what feels right for you. Bring your knees out to the side, rest them on your props at whatever height. I think I'll do medium height today. Again, these props are there to support us. And then hands relax either really outside, perpendicular to your chest if you want a big chest opener, although that might cause you to kind of tense unless you have more props, or they can rest down by your hips. Find soft and full breaths. Release any holding up of your legs that you're doing actively. And let your body rest into the supports underneath you. This is definitely not something to force, but maybe as you feel like you're really seeing an opening more, you could change the setting of your block underneath your knees, but no pressure. I'm going to leave mine where it is. From here, let your breath, again, move its way through your whole body, but maybe emphasize moving up into your chest a little bit, and into your collarbones and your very top ribs. See if you can fill up the very top portion of your lungs, and then exhale, release it out. We're here for five more cycles of breath, so whatever that means for you for these last few moments, take it. Big breath out. If you're ready, maybe roll onto one side. Gently come to a seat. Our next pose is going to be legs up the wall. This posture is always a little bit interesting to get into, I think. We are going to shimmy our hips all the way to the wall. Um, you could place a bolster or a cushion underneath your hips, your pelvis, if that feels good. And then, I didn't mention this before, 
but if you do have a belt or a strap, you could have that handy. Um, and this just takes more activation away from your legs and lets you relax even more, but definitely not necessary. If you have that, you'll make a loop and wrap it around your upper thighs or your lower thighs down towards your knees. We'll eventually get into our pose. <laughs> this can take some preparation. But it's really good to find an inversion. I totally messed this up. I might go without the strap, but you do you. All right. So we're gonna inch our way. I'll use my bolster to the wall. Prop your hips up or just scoot them really close. And then your heels are gonna rest onto the wall. All right, back is relaxed on the ground. Legs are pointing up towards the sky. If it doesn't feel right for your pelvis to be above your heart, you could remove the bolster underneath your pelvis. Now tighten that strap if you want, and you could even tuck it underneath your body so you don't need to hold onto it in any way, and it's just there supporting your legs. <sighs> Take a breath to arrive and then See how melty you can get. in with your mind. See if you're here. If your mind has wandered off, you could just focus it on the breath, not controlling the breath in any way, but just paying attention to the length or depth or where it goes. You could also just tune into your body. So do a little body scan from head to toe, slowly releasing each area as you go. Check in, see if there's anything you can do to make yourself a little more comfortable. Ten more cycles of breath. Take one more breath. Exhale to softly release. And crawl your legs back down. Unhook the strap if you used one. Roll onto one side. 
And then we're gonna find a spinal twist on each side with some support. So for this, I like to hug my bolster kind of underneath my right waist and then maybe place a block or a rolled up blanket or another pillow between your knees. So it's a really, really gentle twist. It's honestly more of a sideline, but you could rest your head, your right ear down onto the bolster and then maybe gently peel your left elbow back behind you. That would make it more of a twist coming from the upper body. Again, hips are stacked. So think about shooting your left hip point forward if you do take that option. Maybe stretch your left arm overhead. And here, think about expanding your left lung. And then rest onto the bolster or onto a block behind you so you don't have to hold your arm up. Relax whatever is tensing. And if opening up the left arm feels like too much, you can always lower it back down and just lay gently on your right side and enjoy adult nap time. As you're ready, we will just easefully roll to the other side. Keep the pillow or the blanket between your knees. Rest your left side of your body down. Stack your hips. Again, maybe play around with opening the chest and the right arm. Stretching your right fingertips overhead, maybe resting onto the bolster. And then really inflating through the right lung here.
this point, if you want, you could relax your right arm down by your side now. a few more breaths on this side. And feel free to stay here as long as you would like. Otherwise, our final pose is going to be a supported Shavasana. Find a rolled up blanket or a bolster, lay all the way onto your back, and then slide the bolster underneath your knees so that you have a nice little bend in your knees. Giving some slack to the back line of the body. Your hands can rest down by your sides or you can place them down on your belly or your heart. At this point, if you want to drift off into sleep, that would be great. Maybe you find a blanket to lay over you or an eye mask. And then arrive here with a breath. Check in, see if you can drop your bones heavier down into the ground and soften your skin, release your muscles, starting down in your toes and your feet and ankles, up through the shins and calves, the thighs, the hamstrings, the glutes and hips and pelvis and pelvic floor. Relax into your belly, the sides of your waist, your ribs, your chest, out into the shoulders and the upper arms and biceps your forearm down into the palms of your hands and your fingers. Sliding back up into your neck and your throat and your jaw. To the back of the skull, the crown of the head and then into your forehead and your eyes. your temples.
yourself drift off into more relaxation. This is where I will leave you today, but I encourage you to stay as long as you possibly can here. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time.